Hello. How are you all doing? You well? Most of us fairly disappointed that a child just walked on stage. Some rise the rough into the room there. Just... Really? I didn't even like Home Alone. Fuck. Oh. Worst day ever. Uh, hi, my name's Daniel. I should point out uh, very early on, yes, I'm young. I'm um, 22, if you were wondering, um, which is weird, being young, doing stand-up comedy. Can't do stuff older comedians can do. You'll see older comedians that come on stage and brag about having sex with women half their age. <laughs> Tends to be frowned upon, really. Not so much in Scotland, but when you're in Sweden, uh, rules change. And if that joke offended you, it's going to be a long 20 minutes. Uh, I would <laughs> drop your morals now. <laughs> I am from Scotland, uh, I was born in England, but I do consider myself fully Scottish because my mum's an alcoholic and my dad's clinically obese, so <laughs> things kind of worked themselves out, really. Uh, I turned, uh, turned 22 recently. Turning 22 was quite weird. Turning 21 was worse, because turning 21, that was quite scary. That was me officially becoming old. Sorry to offend all of you, but uh, you'll be dead soon, who cares? Um, I think I don't, I don't like my birthday. I think not in any sort of emo way, you know, like, oh, I don't want to go old. I just, my birthday's a fairly shit birthday. My birthday's on September the 11th. <laughs> yeah, right, that's what I don't like. That's the standard reaction. When's your birthday? September the 11th. <gasps> I didn't fucking do it. <laughs> Jesus. It's not like my uncle came up to me and said, what do you want for your birthday? And I went, oh, I don't know, surprise me. <laughs> oh, he's got... I feel quite old in different parts of my life. Like I've got two younger brothers who make me feel quite old. Um, one of them is a nine-year-old, and the other one's a dick. And they can be quite fun, because kids are stupid, and they're fantastic. But like, I've got a very weird relationship sorry, with my brothers. Uh, my mom's had four kids, and you can tell that she loves us all the same, but after the first two, she kind of stopped caring, because <laughs> she'll always go on about how she was blessed with me, then she was gifted with my sister, then she had my brother. And she'll always remember the day that she was diagnosed with the other one. And you're like, I don't even think that's... And don't clap. <laughs> but yeah, there, we're, like, we, went to, we went to Disney uh, a few weeks ago because I'm a child. And I don't care if you judge me, it's fucking awesome. I got to meet Cinderella, up his. Uh, it was magical, it was beautiful. And the fun started before we even got to Disney. Like, we went to the airport and we sort of got there and we got to the security section. And uh, I went through, fine, my brothers went through, fine. And my dad got there, and just as he was going through, me and my brothers gave each other a look. We knew what game was about to be played. <laughs> my dad went there, and just as he started to undo his belt, me and my brothers went, no, dad, I'm sorry! <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's the best way. But yeah, no, I feel myself getting older in different ways. Like, I don't want to get older, because I, I hate old people. I, I really I hate them. I'm glad they die. I think it's great. Um, now, before I upset anyone, uh, when I say old, I'm not putting a number there. I don't see age as a number. I see age as an attitude. You're not defined as being old by how many years you've been on this planet. You're defined as being old by how cold and dead you are inside. Right? <laughs> My gran is 85 years old, and she's one of the loveliest friendliest, most down-to-earth woman that's ever existed. Mainly because she's always drunk, but <laughs> she's fantastic. I love her. I would never call her old, right? She hates my generation. She, th she hates me. She thinks we've ruined the world. She's like, chivalry is dead. Your generation has killed chivalry. And I'm like, how is chivalry dead? Because people don't open doors for me anymore. Men no longer pay me compliments. People at bars no longer buy me drinks because chivalry is dead. And I'm like, Gran, that's not because chivalry's dead. That's because you're 85 and nobody wants in your pants anymore, right? <laughs> Except for the doctrine, that's just a change of back, but we'll talk about that later, right? And I'll be honest with you, Gran, I think the main reason that people don't open doors for you anymore is because you are the slowest moving object <laughs> that has ever existed. And that's a 10 minute commitment some people just don't have in their day. Like, I love this woman to bits, but when we go shopping, it's like walking a fucking turtle, right? <laughs> um, I was gonna tell you, uh, I'm single. Um, I was in a relationship for two and a half years, uh, which is an incredibly long time when you don't love someone. 
And don't worry, she's not here. Like, they'll never find her. But, uh, okay, okay, there you go. We, fi we found the line. Don't murder people. Good. Right. But the thing is, I was never a particularly good boyfriend. I don't, I don't, like, I didn't do the cliches that you have to do in relationships. Like, a lot of boyfriends go, oh, you're the most beautiful girl in the world. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. I never told my girlfriend that she was the most beautiful girl in the world. And that was for personal reasons. It's because she wasn't. <laughs> and not in a bad way. She was very good looking. I was doing quite well for myself. But my logic is there are 3.5 billion women on earth. There can be only one most beautiful girl in the world. That's how it works. That's what that means. So all I'm saying is that Statistically, <laughs> probably wasn't her, okay? <laughs> I hadn't done the research. <laughs> I'm a mummy's boy deep down. Um, I'm such a mummy's boy. Um, she's great. Like, I, I moved out recently. Um, I got my own place uh, in Edinburgh, and that was quite... It was quite heartbreaking for my mum because uh, you know, her, her biggest fear when I moved out was that I was going to become a drug addict, which was very naive of her because I was a drug addict when I lived with her. <laughs> I was just much better at hiding it. <laughs> now, when I say drug addict, I don't do drugs. I do drug. I do one drug. I do a drug I reckon about 50% of people in this room will have tried at one point or another. A drug a lot of people do agree should be legal by now because it's got no real health ramifications. Heroin. It's... <laughs> It's not my <laughs> Obviously, I'm talking about weed. I do occasionally smoke weed. Uh, I'm not trying to condone it. I'm not trying to say it's awesome, but it fucking is. Uh, it's just, it's something I do because I trust it. I don't do any other drugs because all other drugs can kill you. Even alcohol can kill you. If you go to a party and somebody overdoses on alcohol, that's a very serious thing. That's, Daniel, Daniel, come quick. Steve's overdosing alcohol. How does he look? Oh, he's awful. He's on the floor. He's barely breathing. He's in a pool of his own vomit. We're going to have him to get a hospital and we're going to have to get his stomach pumped. As opposed to, Daniel, Daniel, come quick. Steve's overdosing marijuana. How does he look? Comfortable. He's <laughs> yeah. uh, watching Shrek. Uh, do we have any Pringles? I was talking about being single. I'm not particularly good at the whole single thing because I'm not particularly good at sex because I don't care enough to try. Um, <laughs> it's the thing is, I, I think sex is a lot like tennis in that I enjoy watching it, but I'm not particularly good at it. And <laughs> uh, that offended you? Jesus Christ! Just wait to the rest of this fucking joke. I do not come across well. Uh, yeah, no, I think... I'm a, I, give me a cheer if you're a fan of tennis. All right, good. Give me a cheer if you're a fan of sex. Oh, good, right, okay. Someone definitely fucking loves over there. That's good. The uh, thing, is, I, the thing I, that really annoys me about tennis is people that watch tennis say the stupidest things. Like, the most common thing you hear whenever the tennis is on is, oh, my God, the noises those women make when they play tennis. It makes it sound like they're having sex. Really? I think you might be doing sex wrong. <laughs> if you're having sex with a woman and she's going, oh! Oh! Let her go, okay? <laughs> she is not enjoying that. Stop it. Oh, somebody phoned the police. There's a crime being committed. That is the wrong type of backhand, sir. From my experience, if women were to make the same noises they make during sex while playing tennis, this is what tennis would sound like. Shh. You're gonna wake my dad up. Seriously? Are you nearly finished? No, not in my hair. Right. Just the umpire sat there. <laughs> there was no love in that set. No love either side. I hate noisy sex. I really do. I think if you have noisy sex, you're the worst type of person. It's, there's no need for noisy sex. There's no need. None of the noises during sex are necessary. Don't talk to me during sex. I put up with three hours of your shit to get to this point in time. I think I've earned a break. <laughs> I'm not kissing you because I like you. I'm just making sure it's closed. That's all I'm doing. That's... 
I don't even like the compliments during sex. Like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> don't lie to me. <laughs> like, I know I'm bad in bed, but I don't care. I'm already having sex with you. I've won. <laughs> I stopped caring about what you thought three fucking minutes ago. To be fair, I think it's very nice that ladies do lie during sex, because it would be so much worse if you told the truth. Just, oh my God, this is so below average. <laughs> I just want to phone a taxi. <laughs> just me being honest in return, going, you were so much skinnier with clothes on. <laughs> I've... <laughs> I've never seen a pair of tights look so relieved in my entire life. Um, <laughs> thought I pulled off her pants, not a fucking ripcord, but there you go. And that's, that's how I like to end my set. Uh, <laughs> making sure that no woman in the audience ever wants to sleep with me. Uh, you guys have been a pleasure. I've been Iron Sloss. Cheers. <laughs>